Um, the last point of, of um, uh, I just want to make is a lot of these, a lot of these cameras, the chip-based cameras or, or video-based cameras, are, are popular for doing stereo. Not only because they have you know a lot less grain, um, which you don't want in stereo, since grain kind of doesn't actually have a, a, a spatial um, place, and that is you got to respect sort of the video or, or, or um, digital cinema kind of um, qualities. So if in, in this case, for instance, this is the raw footage where it, it's blown out. There's no way in getting, getting back that detail. So it's taking care that knowing the format you're actually shooting on and making the necessary um, preparations for getting things right. For instance, we did actually shoot the same shot with a, with a stop down. So we, we do actually have the image um, if we need to patch it back in. So that's sort of the, uh, so the more common problems uh, the, that we've encountered on, on, on this shoot and on other things as well. So um, the shot we will probably be talking about most of the day is indeed this one. And I'll, I'll try to go through and see if I can find some of the same kind of problems that we had in the other shots as in this one. So we decided to, uh, to, to try and do some visual effects and, and, uh, and keying and fixing some of all the errors on this shot, and it turns out to be 960 frames in stereo. So there was a, quite a lot of uh, work to be, to be done on it, to be fair. Um, you have some of the same problems as in the other shots. There's a lens reflection on this part of the building, switching from left to right. Actually, you can see it moving, and that stuff would just have to go. There's other things like the um, polarization on the ground especially on the wet bits, you can see they're changing quite a lot. And one of the cameras is also slightly darker than the other and slightly greener. Um, as far as I know, the camera recognition used, because you're shooting through a polarized, polarized filter, you also lose, I think you, you lose a stop and they compensate that on the other eye as well by, uh, by uh, putting another, another ND filter on, I think. Is that right? And you lose a stop on each camera. Yeah. Uh, and most of the color you see yeah. And um, some of the other things that actually can happen is, is one of the plates might be softer than the other one, and that's a bit more tricky to fix. There's obviously dolly tracks that needs to go. And there's just a couple of more technical kind of things. So moving plastic bag on that side that we're going to try to uh, get rid of. So basically, I'm going to try to prep the plate for, um, for Russell and Florian before they take over and show you how the actual sort of comping in stereo works. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is start by grading the, uh, the right eye, which is the non-hero one, to the hero eye, the left one. Now, we have a little bit cheeky because we already got a camera track for this. I'm not going to go into specifics of how we got the camera track yet. That is something I do believe Russell will hopefully t try and talk about. But having a 3D track of your scene helps immensely with shots like this, where you really want to try and keep your, your manual labor down, especially when you're dealing with shots like this where it's 960 frames. You want to keep the amount of paint and roto down considerably. So the first thing I'm, I'm, um, I'm going to do is try to grade one of the eyes to the other one. And keep in mind I'm not going to touch the sky because all that stuff, stuff's going to go. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm gener generating some really rough mats in, in 3D. So I'm making sure that the camera we're using is actually pointing correctly with at both eyes. So I'm rendering this out to its own layer and piping it into the, my main B stream as a channel. So I'm keeping that as a channel set called rough mat. So I can easily select one side from the other one. I'm doing something similar down here where I'm actually trying to um, create a bit more articulate version of it. And you can see it tracks with the camera. It's actually missing a bit. So I'm just piping, prepping the stuff, putting it back into the shop, not doing anything with it yet. There's some additional stuff for, for um, the D spill I'm packing in. So with that said, I'm ready to grade my right eye to the left one. So what I'm doing is like the, uh, the basic example. I split the eyes and I start grading it globally just to match the actual color intensity of it. And then I start grading based on the mats slightly up and down, so if I compare with the old one. I 
think you can see it. So it's just fixing all those little subtle things that, that will actually help the stereo effect a lot better. So speaking of this little lens flare or lens reflection across here, I'm try to get rid of it by, by reprojecting a clean plate version of, of both eyes back onto, onto themselves. Now, I'm not going to go too much into detail about projections because that's been covered in, in previous master classes as well as uh, Russell and Florian is going to talk a bit more in depth about it. But basically I'm, I'm finding, um, I'm splitting out my left eye, since that's the hero one, at a certain frame. In this case, I want frame 716. And I start to paint, match, and kind of get, try to get rid of most of it, based on, based on other frames as well. So I got a still of what I want, and I got a camera projection set up. If I can just kill the rest of them. Nope. There you go. I actually have my, uh, my um, cafe projected back onto some really, really basic shapes. So I'm, I'm filming this now with both my tracked cameras, but I'm projecting from only one camera because I want both eyes to film the same thing and I only need one projection. That's the only difference when doing projections in stereo is you only have to, most of the time, project from one eye and film it from both. So when you switch left to right, you'll actually see it's working. Now there's a little bit of um, movement on this one further out. There's a little bit of wind blowing through it, so I'm actually at some point fading it off. It's a, it's a cheap trick, but um, it actually, uh, you actually get rid of the lens flare and actually works a lot better since your eyes are now a lot more consistent in that area. The same, I'm doing the same, roughly the same thing for the, uh, for the dolly tracks. I'm splitting out the left view, keeping one frame, and I'm uh, actually painting out some of the stuff that's, because I'm going I'm to copy this area out and paste it further down, but I want to do it in 3D space so I know it's consistent because the camera are, are already tracked and, and, and working well. So I copied it out. I projected on a card. I copied the card back, actually two copies of itself. And I render it out. So one projection using both eyes. Copy it back across. Seems to work. Dolly track is gone. It's a qu quick way of doing it. And uh, there's one, there's one for this area as well where I get rid of that one because it's it's blowing in the wind. So, so that's kind of the, the the basics of trying to fix some of the stuff is is using reprojections. And, and as much as, as I, I try to do projections and procedural methods as much as I can because when you when you're dealing with long shots and you have to do everything twice in stereo, you, you really want to try to minimize the amount of manual labor you have to do anyway. So having a 3D camera track is is really really helpful. So I'm doing, uh, then I'm going to start doing the key. I'm not going to go too much into the detail of the key. It's um, still a work in progress. We're still working on last night, all of this. Um, but again, I'm, I'm trying to use a bit more procedural methods of getting, getting rid of things and, um, and, and not base it on, on rotor shapes. Although the new painter rotor stuff is working quite nicely, I gotta say. Trying to keep a mat for the fence try to do a joining area for the, for the ground, for the background. And I have a uh, scene hold in for, for, for uh, everything outside the screen. And then I have a 3D setup for the holdout for the actual um, area we want to we cut out from where the uh, reprojections and the stuff um, these guys will be showing later 